Hey everyone, what's up? I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, what I'm going to be doing is give you a walkthrough of Android 14 on the Google Pixel 8 Pro. I got this phone two weeks ago and I've been using it since. My last phone was a Galaxy Note 8 and I'm really liking it so far. Love and stock Android and figured I'd just give you guys a walkthrough on what the OS is like should you think about wanting to purchase a Pixel phone. To get started, we're just gonna go ahead and start with the lock screen. So let me go ahead and get it up. So here is the lock screen. If you were to slide down on the lock screen, you get your notification center and then if you were to slide this down forward, you would get access to additional controls. So if I slide this down further, there's your additional controls and you can scroll through multiple pages to get access to more functionality while inside that notification center. And then of course you can just swipe up from the bottom to get back to the lock screen. Now, if you were to tap and hold on the lock screen anywhere, you get your little button to customize the lock screen. All right, and then it wants me to put in my code or try to use face unlock. Standing up to use the face unlock here. Oops. This is where you can customize your lock screen. First things first, over here, you can change the color. And as you can see, as you go through each color, it kind of shows you what it looks like on the text. And otherwise, you can hit the three dots to get access to more colors as well, and also get a dual view of what those colors will look like for certain widgets that you have on your home screen. Otherwise, you can go back. We'll just reset it because I have everything set the way I want it, but just want to give you guys a tour. If we go to more wallpapers, obviously you can pick a wallpaper from here and set it, or you can also set any photos that you have on the phone itself. Shortcuts. So these shortcuts right here, if I tap on this, it's basically so you get access to certain functionalities at the bottom corners of your lock screen. That way you can access those quick functions without having to unlock your phone first. Now I have mine set to have mute on the left, but obviously if I want to change this, for example, I can just tap left shortcut or make sure left shortcut is highlighted and I can change that. So as you can see, I can change it to the flashlight. And if I want the right shortcut, I have it set to camera. Otherwise you can do whatever you like or set it to none. So that way you have no shortcut at all. I'm actually going to keep that because the mute functionality. Actually, no, let me change that back because I'm still doing some more testing on the phone. See what I like and what I want to have set. But otherwise, that's pretty much how you can customize your lock screen. And then when you're on the home screen, if you want to access the notification center, you can swipe down and you don't have to go all the way to the top of the screen to swipe down first. You can just do it in the middle of the screen like this and you get access to the same notification center as if you were on the lock screen and get to your same controls. Now to customize your home screen, what you can do is tap and hold anywhere on the screen, but it's gotta be an empty space. You do have to be careful of where you're holding down on the home screen because let's say if I were to hold down right here, Obviously, because I have the clock widget set to take up that amount of space because of the way I sized it right here. As you can see, it's going to think that you want to edit that widget, but I actually just want to edit the home screen. If you tap anywhere right here, it's for customizing this built-in widget by Google, which you actually can't get rid of. To make it easy, you can just tap anywhere on an empty space on your home screen and you get access to some of the same settings that we were looking at before. But otherwise, you have some additional functionality over here. Let's take a look at widgets. So obviously, you have a whole list of widgets that you can go through right here. 
depending on which one you want, you can go ahead and set it. Let me actually do one here with you guys. So I'm going to get rid of my battery widget. And we'll start over so I can give you a demonstration. So I'm going to go back to widgets. Go to battery. And then I'm going to go ahead and select this one. So we're just going to tap and hold. And I'm just going to drop it right about there. And you'll notice too that wherever you're dropping it, it also kind of highlights where you're trying to place it. And then you can resize it if you want, which I actually want it all the way right there. This is a battery widget that will show me a bigger view of the battery life. But also, if I had any Bluetooth devices connected that also have their own battery source, it'll show up over there too. And I got the Beats widget right there at the very top for a Bluetooth speaker that I have from them. So that's basically how you can customize your home screen. Another thing I wanted to look at right here is the phone app. So obviously this is the app where you're going to be making all your phone calls and such. And there were some settings that I wanted to give you guys a quick glimpse for caller ID and spam. Basically, this is a way for Google to show you some information on certain calls that you get if they think it's spam and it gives you a heads up, which is pretty nice. And obviously you got a toggle switch to enable that or disable that. Uh, hold for me. Google tries to use their AI technology a lot within the Pixel phone from what I notice. Hold for me does use that in order to help you stay on hold on a call, but you don't have to be on the call at the same time or during that hold time. I've yet to test this, but it seems like a pretty neat feature. Hopefully I get a chance to test that one day. Several other settings right here. Pretty straightforward. What I did like about the phone app too is the voicemail tab. Say if you were to get a voicemail, it's a voice recording that you would play back and listen to it, but they can also transcribe that audio into text. So you can actually read what the person is trying to tell you, which is very helpful because sometimes depending on the voicemail you get, depending on the situation, you might have a hard time hearing them. So this is actually a very nice feature that I really enjoy. That's basically the phone app. One thing I wanted to show you on the home screen right here is if I went back into wallpaper and style, I scroll all the way down, app grid. AppGrid lets you customize your home screen to set how many rows of icons would you like to have on your home screen. And when I first started using this phone, I was set to 4x4. Four four, and I was looking all over trying to figure out how to change that. And I saw some forms saying, oh, you can't change that without using a third-party launcher. But no, that's not the case. If you guys wanted to set your row of icons to actually be more than 4x4, four this is the way to do it. And you can just select it from here based on your preference. So that's a pretty neat feature. Uh, let's go into settings right here. So nothing crazy about settings. This basically gives you quite a lot to play around with. One thing that I wanted to show you is if you guys notice so far, I've been using hand gestures to try and navigate on my phone, kind of like on the iPhones and the iPads when they don't have a home button. The Pixel allows you to navigate that same way, but you do have a choice. If you did want it to go back to the old school style way of just having the three capacitive buttons at the bottom, you can do that. And here's how. So when I went to settings, as I did here, and I go to system, I go to navigation mode. This is where you can make whatever choice you like. When you're setting up the phone for the first time, they're going to give you a choice right there and then and let you test around before you go through completing the whole process. Otherwise, you can change it later, like what you can do right now that I'm showing you. If I hit three button navigation, notice I got the three buttons at the bottom of the screen. I got the back button. I got the home button. And I have my multitasking button that shows all the open apps that are running in the background. Otherwise, if I wanted to change that, I just go back to settings, system, navigation mode, gesture navigation. And if you hit the gear icon for each of them, you do have certain settings that you can explore.
and if I go to gestures, you can set it to do certain functionalities based off of what's on this list right here. So those are some of the general basics that I wanted to show you about Android 14 on the Pixel 8 Pro. Otherwise, a lot of the new updates within Android 14, a lot of the key features on the Pixel 8 Pro really has to do with Google AI. It's definitely enjoyable to use, especially the Google Voice Assistant right here. So if I hold down the lock button, hey Google. Good evening, Benjamin. How can I help? How are you today? I'm great, thanks. Just putting the finishing touches to my New Year's plans. What are your plans for New Year's Eve? Oops, I forgot to hit the microphone button. What are your plans for New Year's Eve? Hopefully, I'll be helping you play fun party music. Okay, I don't want to... I didn't expect it to do that, so... Don't want to have copyrighted music playing. <laughs> but a lot of the new features within Android 14 on the Pixel 8 Pro involves Google AI quite a bit. And I'm still exploring all that. Some more things to check out when you're considering a Pixel 8 Pro is the camera system. Definitely a lot of features within the camera right here. I was doing some video tests earlier today. And we'll definitely show you guys what that looks like. Other than that, lots of features within the camera. Well, that's all I had for this video today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and got a good idea on what it's like to use Android 14 right off the bat if you were to get an Android device for the first time. Hopefully this helps you out with whatever choice you make with whatever phone you're gonna get out there, whether that's Google, Samsung, Motorola, or if you don't like Android and you just wanna get an iPhone, hey, that's fine too. If you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this and hit the bell notification too so that you don't miss out whenever I post a new video. Also take a look at the description below to check out my social media links. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you and have a great day.